All right, I don't think I'm going to record this again, so I'm going to see how it comes out in the first go in itself. So this is the first go. Um, my dog passed away about um, a month ago. Uh, his name was Sirius. He was four years old. And uh, that's one of the reasons for the delay in the podcast and things like that, uh, videos and all. Um, but I thought I'll take this opportunity to talk a little bit about death, uh, how I see it, what I understand from it. In no way am I an expert on the subject, obviously. But I've been fortunate or unfortunate enough to have seen many, many, many deaths. And um, there are certain commonalities between all of them, certain things that are similar. It doesn't really matter if it's an animal or a person. There are certain things that, that are very, very similar um, in this great act we call death. So, as I said, I've been fortunate or unfortunate enough to have seen many. And because of that, I think a lot of my um, evolution as a person happened much, much before its time. Um, like, I became much more mature for my age. And... Uh, didn't have um, didn't have the priorities that others have who have not uh, witnessed these things. For example, I'm not extremely materialistic and um, sort of towards the more esoteric, mystical, spiritual sides and things like that. Things that I um, try to look for answers for this this great act because well, it it keeps. Uh, uh, I'm reminded of this act again and again because it happens so often. So, when I was very young, when I was five years old, I think, was the first time I saw someone die. I didn't see someone die, actually. I witnessed um, death. It was my great-grandmother. I was five years old and I was sleeping in my bed and my father came in the morning and he woke me up and, uh, you know, he said that... uh, Nani telling him because obviously my uh, father's grandmother. So, so I woke up in a daze. I didn't even understand what it was. I was five years old. The concept was very, very alien to me. So I came down, um, you know, we used to live on the first floor. So I came down and I saw her laying there. And uh, It was a very strange, surreal, dreamlike state that it put me in. Um... My father told me to go and uh, kiss her on the forehead. And I was very young and I didn't understand, um, you know, and I was scared. I was scared of seeing this lifeless corpse. Uh, you, you feel a certain sense of uh, divorce from the vessel as opposed to what it was when it was living. I don't know how else to explain it, but for people who've seen someone die, they would know that um, you feel a little detached from the body. Uh, you don't really think that they are the same person for some reason or the same entity for some reason when you look at the vessel you don't think it's the same uh, thing that you had a relationship that you spoke to that you loved or hated whatever I mean, you, you don't really feel um, the same I think it has to do with you going into denial psychologically but um, I also think there's a metaphysical underlying um, awareness that you have that that you know within that whatever was within the thing that is laying there has gone. So it's only a corpse now. Um, as such, um, you know, I, I still regret it, of course, sometimes I think that I should have kissed her on the forehead, I should have thanked her for her existence, for the lessons that I learned from her, some of which were not really great lessons, tragic lessons, really. But, um, yeah, I mean, but that was the first uh, time I was acquainted with death. Then, I mean, so many, I can't even recall half of them sometimes, but uh, about a decade or half a decade later, I think a decade later, uh, was the second time when I saw my maternal grandmother pass away. A year later, I saw my maternal grandfather passed away, and all of them lived close by. So obviously, we were—I was—I was a little close to them. 
not exceptionally and not as much as i would li- have liked at this moment thinking back how close i would have liked to be uh, but yeah then a year later one of my uncles then another uncle then i had quite a few uncles that passed away within uh, a span of 4 years i think almost and uh, also someone i knew very long time ago also passed away a long time ago of course that was when i was uh, 19 20 um then my dog passed away to a boy passed away in 2015 i had him for 8 years he survived by blue who's 14 years old uh who i still wake up in the middle of the night sometimes scared of losing her as well but i think that's also not something i can avoid indefinitely um after to boy in 2015 in 2016 my grandmother passed away i lived with her for 26 years i was 26 in 2016 so i lived with her for 26 years so you can imagine how close i was to her i loved her i still do love is transcendental it's beyond space and time really um yes and then recently sirius passed away with sirius it was very rapid also um he was fine one day and then he all all of a sudden he was fine in the morning he all of a sudden started vomiting by the evening start stopped eating by night then urinated blood by night then um uh the next day uh, we took him to the doctor we thought that he'll be fine but his health uh, you know deteriorated so rapidly you can't expect uh, you don't expect something like this to happen especially for a dog who's only 4 years old and relatively a very very healthy dog beautiful beautiful very pure innocent creature so um so the next morning of course we took him to the doctor and he said it's tick fever and he'll be fine but his health just kept deteriorating and the the last night when i saw him pee blood i knew that he's he's passing away and it was such a rapid uh, progression that there was nothing really you could do that's another thing um, I, i think because i've witnessed so many deaths and by deaths i don't necessarily mean just seeing some uh, just seeing someone dead i mean the act of passing away from living to non living like that and i've seen it so many times that there's a certain sense of uh, sensitivity that i've acquired that i know if someone is about to not obviously not in some spiritual sense but i when i look at someone and if they are sick uh, there's a very high chance that i know um whether they'll make it or not and i find that very very troubling sometimes because i keep telling people that well it's going to happen it's going to happen but people think ah uh, it's not going to happen you have to be optimistic about it but every time i've tried to be optimistic about it i have been proven wrong so that's that that's another thing so anyway the point is the uh anyway so this uh, so we took him to the doctor in the morning serious and uh, well his health kept deteriorating and by night he started having epileptic seizures very successively very rapidly his legs gave up and i thought for a moment that i should take her to mac t- take him to max um, vets or some 24/7 veterinarian clinic but i knew that he is not going to make it i just knew you know um and in the back of my head it was a moralistic argument whether i want him to pass away in an un- unknown environment on a cold metal table as opposed to in his house where everyone loves him where i love him where my father loves him my mother loves him so you know that that was also there in the back of my head so i thought it's it's better that he passes away in the house rather than in a place with unknown people injected with syringes uh, consistently so so yes yeah, so you know what it does to you and uh, of course as i was saying there's a certain sense of commonality a certain sense of s- um, a similar uh, progression that happens with everything uh, that's living um to witness death to witness uh, the moment where uh, where the biological vessel where this receptacle gives up uh, is a very very strange uh, uh an altered state of mind that it puts you in 
I think an altered state of mind is the way to put it. There are, of course, stages that happen. N- number one, when someone is diagnosed with a terminal illness, like my grandmother was diagnosed with cancer. Obviously, I don't say that my sorrow is greater than people who've lost their parents. I mean, my sorrow is nothing compared to that, I guess. But the love is still there, you know, the intensity of love is still there. So, anyway, so when someone is diagnosed with a terminal illness, or when you know that someone is passing away, the stages happen in very rapid succession. Number one, you um, you deny that anything is going to happen. You're trying to hold on to um, the memories with that person uh, in rapid succession in your mind. Um, you're going through all these memories that you have with the person, with the entity, with the animal, with anything really. Uh, so you think of the good times and things like that, and and you're thinking also projecting a little bit of. Uh, the inevitability and the cessation of when it ends so the absence you're also thinking a little bit about the absence the vacuum it will bring when the thing when the entity passes on so that's what happens the denial it lasts for a few days or a few hours depending on how rapid the succession of uh, uh, the drama is um, following that uh, there is a sense of uh, frustration where you feel helpless and that is what death does it reminds you of helplessness it reminds you of how helpless we all are uh, in the face of this this grand act that plays out so that happens um number three i think happens is in a sense of acceptance and a sense of letting go where you look at the misery that the entity is in And you wish that it goes. You wish that the suffering goes. You don't want the entity to go, obviously. You love the entity. Uh, But you want the suffering to end. You want the suffering for them to end. Because their suffering is also your suffering. Which is not something a lot of people realize. But to see someone suffer, you suffer with them. Um, You take on some of that suffering. uh, On your own. You, You sort of assimilate, you know, some of that pain. In you, that's why you feel pain. That's why you feel absence. That's why you feel frustration. You feel all these emotions. You're sort of uh, acting as a mirror uh, for that, for that entity, for that uh, life force. Um, yeah, and you wish that they go. You wish that they leave uh, because you don't want to see them in suffering. When you love something so much, you don't want to see them suffer. You want them to go on peacefully. But sadly, most of us don't really get the privilege of passing on peacefully. Um, so Sirius, yes, as I was saying, uh, suffered a lot in the last three hours of his life. Um, and then something happened that I've seen before, that I've seen many times with birds, with animals, with people. Um the last act, the last uh, uh, experience for the for the thing that's passing on. It's it's the same for all of for all of us. It's the same for everyone, really. And in yogic terms, you call this uh, kumbhak. I mean, of course, you don't call this act itself kumbhak, but there is something that happens in a very physical manner that you uh, that you call um, kumbhak in yoga what kumbhak really means is that when you take in a breath you hold or when you exhale you hold and the moment of death it doesn't really matter for who it is and i've i've witnessed this so i can uh, i can attest to that and maybe if someone's a doctor or someone has also gone through something like this would uh, would tell me if it's a pattern that they've also noticed but it's, it's something like this the last breath uh, the last 10 minutes 15 minutes maybe an hour or so is rapid succession <sighs> um, like some sense of a cardio like you're running you're running away from something I don't know uh, what, what really happens inside the being that's passing on but the last moment i know because it's the same and this is also the same the rapid the rapid breathing 
and then the breaths become a little slower in the last 5 minutes 3 minutes 1 minute doesn't time is very subjective in that state but the last moment is always this and they hold it and they hold that breath almost like trying to savor uh, existence one last time trying to savor uh, life one last time trying to savor this experience one last time so it's this holding it in the lungs expand the chest expands the body starts stiffening twitches and then after holding it in for a few seconds it's it goes it it's and it's gone and i've seen this so many times that i know precisely uh, you know that this is precisely what's going to happen now so many times and um there's a sense of release for you as well for those one who was suffering with the entity that passed away there's a sense of relief for them as well um there's a sense of calmness that comes that all right they are not suffering anymore so your suffering also is a little reduced but the strange part is that your suffering truly begins after someone passes away it's only this moment where you feel a sense of momentary relief you cry you wail and uh, you accept if only this state was permanent if only this acceptance was permanent i don't think most of us would be miserable about death or be scared of it really uh it's because this is not permanent this moment f- goes away it's a fleeting moment so your suffering truly begins from the next day onwards or from the next hour onwards where you um, think about that entity that has passed on where you uh, ponder about um, what you could have done uh, where you ponder over that helplessness where you ponder over that powerlessness and that is what death teaches you it teaches you that you are powerless uh, you have no power that no matter how much knowledge you assimilate or how much tough you think you are on the exterior in the last moments you cannot do anything except accept it ha huh. that has been my greatest greatest learning in life death has taught me humility death has taught me that i am also nothing really and i have no power and the moment is so transcendental that it truly doesn't matter if it's an animal or a man or a woman if anyone is passing away a child at the last moment of death there is a certain transmutation there's a certain sense of uh, similarity between all life forces that makes you really really ponder if uh, if all of this uh, is simply a a grand play and nothing else like that that moment is the conclusion of the play uh, you know play <laughs> this tragedy or comedy whatever it is um, that we constantly uh, play out parts in and the only truth that exists is then in that final conclusion that is where you, you, the lesson is learned that is where the truth is unfolded that's where the curtains close um Yes it's it's deeply transformative it's deeply transformative and the state it puts you in in the in the strange state of mind that it puts you in um is very uh humbling you know to remember that we are all going to face the same fate all of us um some sooner some later but all of us are going to face the same fate and it makes you really ponder whether there is something after that 
you might get certain sense of closure a sense of conclusion whether it is the moment of the act closing uh, where the grand realization of the great truth of what is beyond is finally revealed um, that is one of the reasons why i'm so into uh, mysticism and and spirituality and occult and things like that because they this idea of of death is the prime focus of all world religions jesus christ died and was raised up uh, the the act of his uh, the the biblical uh, canon the, the new testament the conclusion of the new testament in some form or the other uh, i mean the 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 faith itself is founded on the death of christ christianity um in hinduism uh, shiva the mahamrityunjay mantra you know the Uh, victory over death so there is this constant recurring pattern in all world religions uh, where death is seen as a certain sense of transformation uh, like a caterpillar becoming a cocoon and then a pupa and then finally uh, finally a butterfly so the caterpillar is of course in motion but the pupa is still like a dead body so maybe that that act of transformation is what really happens but our perception of the act um the way we perceive what we are seeing uh, because we have founded our reality is founded in a certain sense of materialism uh, we limit the existence to the vessel and when the vessel passes um, our perception blocks us from seeing the transformation that happens which i guess happens on a more spiritual level uh, where whatever leaves the cocoon that leaves the vessel is a butterfly but not in this not in this materialistic world i think that at least but sometimes of course i battle existentialism as well and i think there is no meaning to it all and maybe that is true maybe the other one is true but all said and done i too will die and so will you so will everyone um the only advice i will give you on how to handle death is to share in the suffering of the one who's passing away without becoming impatient without wishing that they pass away in haste get your closures right because that's what's going to bother you in life mostly get your closures right kiss them when you can love them while they're still living um and if they are ill take care of them in your fear don't run away from these things face them head on and see them for what they are an act of transmutation where not only the vessel is being discarded for another state of existence but also you are transmuting their pain and suffering into yourself yeah so i of course i miss him and i miss everyone that has passed away in my life um but i know at some point or the other i too will join them as will you as will we all whether it is nothingness that follows or some state of transcendental union not something we will only know at the moment of truth which is the cessation of life so i don't want this to be dark and gloomy because it really isn't it's very philosophical and i hope you take it for what it is instead of uh, wondering and writing in the comments that um, you have my sympathies which of course i'm not going to uh no going to feel bad about you can pass on your sympathies but i hope that this is something that you really ponder over i think everyone all of us should every day take 5 minutes to reflect on our own deaths and that is how the fear of death uh is omitted the biggest fear of our life is the fear of death um take 5 minutes every single day sit down in some asan some posture take a few deep breaths and really touch yourself and see that you're nothing but bones animated uh the ability to feel the ability to express but inherently you're just bones there's a form of meditation that i've practiced for a very long time that has helped me cope with these aspects of existence um in which i lay down and i imagine myself as a dead body uh, decaying uh, 
maggots infested and things like that well, it really helps you divorce yourself from attaching yourself too closely to this vessel it really helps you uh, you know uh, see it for for something that is far 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 beyond uh, this limited flesh bag existence so yes on that note i uh, hope you're all doing well i hope you hold your loved ones a little closer today um and take some time to reflect on your own mortality uh, the biggest fear of our lives so yeah take care for today i shall upload something soon enough and i hope all of you are happy healthy and are taking care of your health and of your loved ones as well for today good evening bye bye